Hello and welcome back to OK at Home DIY. If you're new, I'm Zena. Today's video I'm sharing with you three vintage scrap wood projects for my What Would You Make open invite. We're going to start out with these vintage skis. I'm measuring them to be three and a half feet long, not quite four feet. Three feet were a little bit too short, I thought, for skis. Then gave them a cut down with my miter saw and then I'm sanding them down because these have been outside. These are old wood fence planks and I just wanted to get some of that dust and grime and dirt and some a little bit mold, yes I said that, off of these so they can be usable again. So when I crisscross them, I wanted them the ends both to be touching the ground so it would be even. So I'm using my yardstick here and I'm trying to pretend like that's the floor well, where they'll both hit and then I did some pilot holes and I'm using one inch number eight wood screws to attach most of my wood planks together. Next I'm taking this cake pan or cookie sheet is actually what it is from Dollar Tree and I'm tracing out the ends. This is going to give me that really cool vintage end look with the the metal ends like we're going to use these skis to go trek in. Now I put them on with hot glue first and then I pushed in thumbtacks. Just be careful the tin does carry heat and you can burn yourself so just be very careful with that. Next, I'm pushing in thumbtacks from Dollar Tree. These are gold color, and I didn't mind it. I really am blending the silver and gold here. I like to start out by putting the push pins or thumbtacks in each corner, um, and then the top had some different corners and angles, so I just made sure I ended on a corner. And then when I do that, then I can fill in the space in between and kind of make it look even. And I would use the grid on the cookie sheet to kind of help me space things and get them kind of um, even across the board from each other. And of course, spaced e evenly-ish around there, at least even to my eye. And then when I hammered it, it kind of gave it um, a worn look, so it made it look a little more vintage. So this is the end of the other ski and of course I start with my corners again so then I can make this space in the middle be even and this was such an easy way to do it and I would start with a drill get a little bit of a, a pilot hole and then hammer it in if I went in too deep I just came back in with some hot glue and hot glued them down no problem so I did the metals on both ends of the skis To make the ski poles, I am going to use these really long barbecue skewers from Dollar Tree. And to make the round edges, I'm going to, the round pieces, I'm going to use two coasters. I'm taking a burnished metal in the color gold. This is in folk art, and I'm painting the barbecue skewers, and then I paint the coasters in burnished metal in silver. Gave them a couple coats of that. Found the center by tracing out the circle, folding it half, folding it half again, and then cutting out the center. Then I was able to find my center of my coasters, which now will be the ends of my skis. I didn't really want the hole to be too large, so I kind of just worked it with my drill a little bit and made it larger as I needed. And then I kind of twisted this coaster on there. Now this is the end of the ski. And then I took nine inch strap of, this is like faux leather. You could have leather ribbon. You can cut up a handbag. Um, this came off of an old toy. And I'm just making ski handles with that and making sure they're kind of hitting around the same size. So I'm going to attach with hot glue. But I think a smarter option would be E6000. Or maybe even a staple gun. But I'm attaching with hot glue. The second one I put it on top of the other 
and I'm crisscrossing it to where my ski poles are just on the other side of my skis. I went and did a simple bow and then dovetailed it. This is some buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach it to a pick from Dollar Tree. Now I got this last year, um, but I tied the center around the bow and I tied it to the pick and I'm just going to attach it to the ski with a push pin and we're done. It is my honor to say that today is the What Would You Make Challenge, and my co-host Jamie over at Simple Roots and Simple Living will be linked down in the description box below. Amazing DIYs she makes. And another crafter who makes amazing DIYs is LaParsha over at Creating It Myself. She'll be linked in the description box below, along with the playlist for What Would You Make. Okay, let's get back into DIY number two. I truly am excited to show you how I made this vintage Christmas sled. You guessed it, from old fence panels. Okay, or planks is what you want to call them. Now I am taking five fence planks and I'm cutting them down to three inches long and, and I am staggering them. So the two on the outside are even, even with each other and the one in the center is sticking up. That's going to make my sleigh base. I took a couple more pieces and cut them the length of the, so it would cover three boards, drill pilot holes, and then I put in one inch wood screws, number eight wood screws. Now I do the pilot holes because this is old wood and you can crack it real easily. So I'm just going to go ahead and install that. And in between everything, I used my staple gun to give it some extra support. The runners on the sides are actually five feet long, and then I did a 15 degree cut on the bottom. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just doing some pilot holes. I like to do my pilot holes first, so I'm drilling into each one of those cross beams there and then I'm using that as a template for my other runner to just drill in some pilot holes. I want to take a moment real quick to say I do wear a mask when I'm sanding and cutting these fence posts because they've been pre-treated with chemicals and I don't want to breathe that in. But so I sand down the logs again to get all the dust and all the yucky stuff on the outside and course kind of just shaping the ends a little bit more. I'm painting this sled part or the part that the seat part is going to be bright red. This is from Apple Barrel and this is a matte paint. This size of bottle is two dollars at Walmart and of course just have to show you gotta get the back side too. Now I'm not giving it a really good coat I'm just giving it a coat. Next I painted the runners with black chalk paint and then I'm coming over it with that burnished metal from Folk Art in the color silver to make them look more like silver runners or metal. But it still just looks like wood. But you get the idea. It still looks good. Then I go ahead and assemble the seat onto the runners. Again, I'm using one inch wood screws, number eight wood screws. And I'm just going to go ahead and seal this with Waverly's wax. Now I wanted to make a little swag that hung down on to the sled so I came in and made two loops and tied the center of them with twine. Now I'm tying them together with some more twine and hot gluing some berries on each side. I thought that added some great character to that and I have enough of a tie on the back that I can tie it to this swag. Now this swag I did purchase from Dollar General. Oh, I had this in my stash for so many years, but because it wasn't very thick or full, I went ahead and added a greenery pick from Dollar Tree with a little bit of a twisty tie. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue my bow in place just because I want it in a certain spot and then put some twine on the top, attach it to the sled with a push pin, and I'm done.
These scrap wood Christmas trees were so fun to make. And yes, some more fence planks. I had a friend giving me like three or four panels of these. So I am taking my boards and I'm going to cut the ends of them at a 45 degree angle. I have, depending on which tree you want to talk about, I start each top of the tree with an eight inch board and I'm just cutting the ends a 45 degree angle. Now I'm of course using my miter saw for that. So look at all my boards that I have cut and I'm kind of cut down. So I have an eight inch board and then I have a 12 inch board and then I have 16 inch board, a 20 inch board, 24 inch board. One tree has four planks and one tree has five planks. And I just made the boards go up by four. I thought that really worked out really great. And sometimes I had to do a double cut because I didn't really like how the old wood from the fence post or the scrap wood would um, look. So I decided to cut another angle off that I had it. And I always had flipped the board around so that I always had the longest, longest side closest to me so I could hold on to it. My fingers weren't getting too close to the miter saw. And again, I am wearing a face mask or a respirator, I think it's called. Uh, maybe not. Don't laugh at me. I probably used the wrong word. But um, just to help keep my lungs safe. Took these out and I sanded them and then I wipe them down with water. Wiping them down and getting the dust off helps a lot. So then you're not getting that in your paint, but it also helps to rehydrate the board so that it doesn't soak up your paint so much. Using Christmas Green from Apple Barrel. This is a matte. And I am going to give these guys kind of a loose coat of paint. I can say it's a, it's not a full coat of paint. This is just being brushed on. I really liked the, the vintage look here because I'm going for old rustic vintage. So these are very rustic vintage Christmas trees. I absolutely love them. And then when I am done painting the fronts, I hit the edges on all of them with just a little bit of the paint that's left on my brush. So I pretty much dry brush the edges with this Christmas green color. You want to seal that off with some Waverly Wax or clear uh, sealer or whatever you like. These are going to be outside and now I'm going to assemble them and I'm just using again my one inch number eight wood screws and I just eyeball the spacing. The length of this tree trunk, I'm going to call it the back paneling, is three feet and the other one's just a little bit longer. Now I did try to put like a little spacer on the top there to house the star. Uh, I did end up going to Dollar Tree and picking up some metal stars to put on top of the trees. I wanted wood stars or metal stars because they're it, this is going outside. So both trees are assembled. Again, one had four planks and then this one has five just to make it a little bit different. And I'm taking my metal star from the Dollar Tree. There's a pack of three. It's in the Crafter Square. And I very bravely make a hole in the center there. Um, keep your fingers out of the way. Maybe make a hole with a nail instead of your, your drill. Because um, that metal is thin. It could probably lock something off. So be safe, people. Use, use your safety <laughs> skills. And then I went ahead and just kept my fingers out of the way and put the, the screw in the center of that star. Thank you so much for watching this video. I was so excited to share these vintage Christmas DIYs with you from old fence wood. I love to make old things new and I also love to do Dollar Tree things. So if you're new here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Remember to hit that like button because that helps my channel so much. I always, always want to know which one was your favorite. I'm going to give you a little secret. All of them are my favorite. I guess I'm tooting my own horn here, but I love how they turned out. You let me know if you have a favorite down in the comment box. I'm so excited. Thanksgiving is next week. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And until the next time, everyone, have a good one. Bye.